pleasure to address you uh, your fourth annual meeting today in Stockholm. A special place for the Eastern Partnership. I remember someone having compared the forum a few years ago to a nice toddler. I think we can now say that the forum is not only walking comfortably, but already on the verge of adulthood with its own opinions and keen for its voice to be heard. This meeting is being held uh, under the motto uh, Mapping uh, Our Future. Uh, let me share my views on short-term future of the Eastern Partnership and the role of the Civil Society Forum. The Eastern Partnership Roadmap sets out a clear agenda for the next months uh, until the third Eastern Partnership Summit in Vilnius, in November 2013. And that agenda is advancement, if not finalization, of negotiations on an association agreement with a number of partners, uh, including deep and comprehensive retail area when appropriate, um, referring to the economic integration part of the association agreement. Second, progress on mobility through visa facilitation and liberalization with a visa-free regime as a final goal. And third, deepening sector cooperation and strengthening the Eastern Partnership multilateral track. Through the Eastern Partnership, we have offered our assistance to the six Eastern European countries in completing transformation towards democracy. We support more those who reform more and you can see results of this approach in action. In 2012, three Eastern European countries, which have pressed ahead with the reforms, the Republic of Moldova, Georgia, and Armenia, have been given additional funds under this Eastern Partnership Integration and Coordination Program. Remember, you think? If we maintain the current pace of negotiations of association agreements, including those economic integration part with these three countries and the reform process is being accelerated then the prospect of finalizing those negotiations by the time of the Vilnius summit in November 2013 are good. I also believe that the Vilnius summit could see the signature of the association agreement including the deep and comprehensive free trade area with Ukraine. But to make it happen, the European Union's firm commitment to pursue political association and economic integration with Ukraine needs to be mirrored <coughs> by determined actions of the Ukrainian government and the new parliament to address our well-known and often repeated concerns. Concerning Azerbaijan, talking about the countries, <coughs> although we are intensifying our cooperation ever more, there is still much to be done on electoral law, freedom of assembly, and freedom of expression and the media. As regards Belarus, in parallel to increased support for civil society, we continue to urge the authorities to stop repression and to free political prisoners. We have launched the European Dialogue uh, on Modernization with Belarusian society to discuss the vision of a modern and a European Belarus. Dear participants, uh, Continued uh, progress will depend on two crucial elements. Uh, first, strong political will and genuine efforts of Eastern European governments to implement reforms. And second, the full commitment of the civil society to press government to embark on ambitious reforms, to monitor progress on their implementation, mobilize support across society for transformation agenda, 
and communicate the benefits stemming from political association and economic integration with the European Union. Center, central to the success of transformation towards deep democracy are political reforms. The rule of law and independent judiciary and systemic anti-corruption measures are necessary elements both for long-term political stability and sustainable economic growth. Genuine cooperation between governments and civil society is necessary to introduce systemic anti-corruption measures or establish an independent judiciary system. Similarly, free and fair elections are a central element of a participatory democracy. Governments should be accountable, and this is the role not only for other branches of power, but also for the civil society. Georgian civil society gave a good example of the role which non-governmental organizations can play in the pre-election period. Their contribution to the monitoring of the conduct of the election campaign and their efforts to ensure improved access to media and more transparent party financings are worth mentioning. Underpinning these steps towards deep democracy must be respect for human rights and fundamental freedom. The shared values that all have committed themselves <laughs> to in the Eastern Partnership. We can rest assured that the European Union will continue to support all those who fight for democracy and respect of human rights. Allow me to stress very clearly what I have said many times before. There is no place in Europe for political prisoners. This is why you, representatives of civil society, are so incredibly vital to the success of the partnership. Dear colleagues, so the Eastern Partnership Roadmap has set out the way ahead for all of us, including civil society. Now we must all play our respective roles uh, in its dynamic implementation. In this context, I welcome the strategy adopted last year in Poznan and the proposals you put forward at the Eastern Partnership 